Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at something by another brand new third party company. Or are we? More on that in just a second. But either way this is the infamous toys 1-6 scale space wizard. AKA Ebony Moore based off his appearance in Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame and also Marvel's What If. I personally am really excited to finally have at least one member of the Black Order on my shelf and they also announced Proxima Midnight shortly after this guy dropped so I have faith that Infamous will continue the rest of the line. Now do bear in mind it is third party and it is unlicensed. That means the company that's making this don't hold the correct intellectual property rights to actually make this piece so they're doing it in an unofficial capacity. I have included the link down in the description below for your reference purposes only. Bear in mind this is not a promotional video. This is a review on a product I picked up for my own personal collection. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art for Ebony Moore. Now it is relatively simple but yet very effective. We do have this glossy silhouetted style image of Ebony right up here on the front of the box and down below we have Infamous and Space Wizard. On the side a few more silhouettes this time of the rest of the Black Order plus Thanos and then on the back we have this sort of wireframe image of the rest of the crew. Now so far we have Ebony Moore and Prox Midnight has been put up for pre-order. I'm hoping that Corvus Glaive is next and then they save the biggest and the baddest for last being Cull Obsidian but only time will tell. I know this guy has been incredibly popular so I'm pretty sure the guys over at Infamous who are also over at Toys Era because that's who actually made this figure are paying very close attention to the pre-orders of Proxima Midnight. But here we have Ebony Moore and first in hand impressions are wow this guy is a really tall figure I can't wait to do some side by side comparisons. Now we do of course have one tray and another down below so what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the bits and pieces that come with Ebony Maul. Now as you can see he doesn't come with a ton of stuff. For me personally I'm totally fine with that because I see the value simply in getting the character himself but if you don't and you want more stuff I totally get that. Now starting off with the display base first it's the usual Toys era style it matches the Hot Toys official bases perfectly. I love the shape of it, the size of it and the print up on top has a little bit of grip and texture to it so Ebony Moore should stand on this quite nicely. It's of course meant to replicate the ground when Ebony Moore and Cull Obsidian land in New York. A little bit of rubble on the surface, it looks fantastic. We also have a regular crotch grabber up on top there. Now the only other pieces that he comes with are of course his hands but they are all brand new unique sculpts and they are magnificently painted. We do have a ton of skin texture, the rings are individually picked out in silver and he does have a little bit of a lighter color on the palm of his hands there. So yeah I'm super happy with how these turned out and they are suitably big and alien like. Now I know people probably would have liked some magical effects or some rubble and debris to go on the display base but as I just said for me the value comes in getting the character himself. Now speaking of the character himself what we are going to do now is get Ebony Moore out here and take a closer look. And here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that and right off the bat yeah that's Ebony Moore. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It's set out to be your 1-6 scale version of the character from the films and it's exactly that. They've even nailed the weirdly oversized proportions of the body. He looks perfect. Now I don't often say that a lot. I try and reserve that word for only the best of the best but I think that's exactly what this guy is. In terms of third party figures I don't think it gets any better than this. This might be my favorite third party figure of the year. Now if you think back 
Toy Zero has been killing it. They've been making figures that a ton of people have been asking for, but a lot of companies are too scared to invest in making. I'm talking Doc Ock, I'm talking Green Goblin, Colossus, Juggernaut. They go all out and make the stuff that nobody else can or will, and that's why I'm a huge fan of their work. So of course, I had to support this figure, and I'm glad I did. I love it. It's going to look fantastic right up alongside Thanos for now and eventually the rest of the Black Order when they are released. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal. Now, honestly, I never thought that I'd see the day where I'd have a 1-6 scale version of Ebony Moore in the collection, let alone having Proxima Midnight to go along with him. I'm so very glad it was Toys Era who decided to do this for some very key reasons, which we'll get into in just a second. Now, starting off with the head sculpt first, one of the earliest complaints was that it was lacking in sculpt and detail. Having it in hand, you can see there is a ton of texture here on the surface of the skin. It's also painted very nicely. There's even a teeny bit of gloss just up there on the brow to make it look like he has potentially been sweating. The eyes look fantastic, and he also has a dry brush over the top of the skin just to make it look like the CGI model did in the film. And then of course, on the back we do have the real rooted hair. But it's not just white, there is actually a little bit of a gradation between the various colours of hair that they've used. So yeah, I personally am very happy with this sculpt. Then we get to the outfit. Now I know I just said the body has some really unique proportions, and that it does, but this outfit is really well tailored to it. I mean, of course, because the body and the outfit were designed from the very beginning to go together, but one thing that a lot of people don't touch on is the type of material that Toys Era uses. They use this almost invincible feeling, really sturdy, rubbery type fabric. If I leave this arm bent for the rest of the segment, we'll revisit it in just a second, you'll see when I unbend it, there will pretty much be no crease whatsoever. There's also a ton of detail with the various textures and panels and colours. This piece over the top is a much harder rubbery plastic, but it still bends a little bit to allow for more articulation. So yeah, as for the upper torso, this armour and also sort of overlay coat piece is really nicely done. It feels very sturdy. Then we get to the hands, which I know we've discussed in the accessory segment, but they do look suitably alien-like and very creepy and realistic, plus the rings are nicely detailed. Coming down to the legs, the same really stretchy, very invincible feeling fabric is used down here. There is a ton of texture here as well, it's nice and soft so it shouldn't get in the way of your articulation, and the panels are actually baked in to the fabric so nothing should peel off. Coming down to the boots, it is of course a split cut boot design, my personal favourite, I love what they've done here. It's rather seamless when you have him standing straight up and down, it looks like one solid piece, and I do like the sculpt of it. It's painted relatively simply with some silver and gold and this nice bluish grey colour, but overall, yeah, I'm really happy with how the outfit looks, and to prove my experiment, unbending the arm, as you can see, pretty much no creasing whatsoever. Now you will get a little bit of bumping just due to there actually being joints underneath, you can see it on both sides, but other than that, yeah, I'm going to be pretty comfortable leaving this guy in poses for an extended period of time, and honestly, on rubber outfits from Hot Toys, I don't think I could say the same. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Doctor Strange. This just happens to be the solo movie version with a custom head sculpt by Hot Toys alongside the infamous Space Wizard. And as you can see, these two wizards look fantastic standing side-by-side. Often when we get a third party representation of a character and we put it right up alongside an official product, they don't really gel so well. But I'm not having that issue whatsoever here, these two look 
great side by side. I personally cannot wait to put this Ebony more in the display because I think he perfectly complements your official products. Now, yes, he is a lot taller than Doctor Strange, but that's how he's supposed to be. He's this tall, lanky, space version of Squidward, and I think it works really nicely in 1-6 scale. And of course, this review wouldn't be complete without seeing Ebony Moore right up alongside Thanos, and yeah, the scale once again works here. He is suitably taller than other 1-6 scale figures, but not quite as tall as Thanos. I am curious how Infamous is going to tackle Cull Obsidian, who is supposed to be actually bigger than Thanos, because I think this is going to be a really nice, diverse line of figures in the display. If you were a big fan of the Black Order and Thanos, you could pretty much do an entire display just based off these figures. And honestly, I think you could do a lot worse. Just going over articulation with Ebony Moore. Now, bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a fixed neck and the collar sits rather high. It's also a solid sculpted piece of plastic, so yeah, you don't get a ton of range of motion, but in my opinion, that's more than enough. Now, the arms themselves will go up on ratchets the full way. They will go forward, once again on ratchets and back. There is a butterfly joint at the shoulder a swivel as well, double bend here at the elbow, and a regular 1-6 scale joint for the wrist. As for the torso, we do have crunch forward and back, but this rubbery overlay piece does restrict his movement ever so slightly, but you also have swivel and pivot side to side. The legs themselves will go forward the full way, same thing going out on soft ratchets, swivel at the thigh, a double bend at the knee there, also on ratchets, and lastly, a double ball peg for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the infamous toys Ebony Moore figure. Now, going into this, I was super excited, and it turns out at the end of the video, it was for good reason. This guy is fantastic. One of, if not my favourite third party figure of the year. The sculpt on the hands and the head sculpt beautiful. It looks exactly like he should. The expression is awesome. I love the rooted hair, which is something I never thought I'd hear myself say, but it works so very nicely for Ebony Moore here. The proportions of the body, super accurate to the film. That means they've gone and made a custom body specifically for this figure, and then tailored an outfit out of this really weird rubbery material that feels very, very sturdy. It bounces back immediately after unposing it. I've never quite felt a material like the one that Toys Era uses for these figures. So yeah, they definitely have gotten their material sciences division on point with this release. Now I am hoping we do see the rest. We are seeing Proxima Midnight, of course, but that leaves only two more. Corvus Glaive and Cull Obsidian. If we get the entire crew, it's going to be one happy day for a lot of collectors, including my buddy Will from Will Foxification. He loves the Black Order, so I know he's going to be a very, very happy collector, me included. They're going to look fantastic right up alongside Thanos because they are all very unique. They're different sizes and scales of figures, and I'm glad right off the bat they nailed it with Ebony Moore here. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. If you are looking to pick it up, do bear in mind it is third party and it is unlicensed. That means it's an unofficial product, so keep that in the back of your mind when you are making your purchasing decisions. I have included the link down in the description below for your reference purposes only. Also, while you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.